Hey everyone, welcome Azure Cosmos TV live TV. I'm Mark Brown and I've got with us this week, uh, Deborah Chen. Hey Deb, how are you? Good. Hey Mark. Hey everyone. Good to see you again. This is a really, I'm super psyched about this episode. In fact, I just kind of retweeted our little, <clears throat> our little tweet that we send out it because uh, we're talking about something that to me is pretty, is one of the cool features and cool things about Cosmos and that it's a, a horizontally scalable database, right? It's a scale out. Mm -hmm. And um, while that's very cool uh, for what it can do, uh, it is an unending source of confusion <laughs> for, for customers in understanding, just trying to wrap their heads around what it means when you're horizontally scalable and understanding concepts around throughput, understanding concepts around partitioning. And as you kind of work through kind of um, the life cycle of your app, whether it's you know design and understanding how it works from a, a nominal usage standpoint to uh, peak periods of either data ingestion or just getting slammed with request uh, and understanding how that applies to kind of, you know, the elasticity for the overall workload and stuff. And so um, I saw you talking to a group of folks a few weeks ago and I'm like, I got to get you to come back on and talk about this to, to everyone else. Um, it's, uh, it's just too important of a topic. So anyway, welcome. And uh, let's, let's kind of dive in and, you know, if folks got uh, questions, um, absolutely. Uh, please feel free to ask. This is your chance, right? If you've ever kind of scratched your head around throughput or partitioning and understanding how things kind of work behind the scenes and, uh, and anything like that, just, this is now your chance. So uh, take that opportunity. So anyway, Deb, sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to stop talking. I, I brought you on cause I want you to talk. Um, Thanks Mark. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with you that over the past few years, we've had a lot of questions from our customers wanting to know more behind the scenes. What is actually happening with partitions? What is the physical partition? How does Cosmos DPD determine how many there are? Uh, does knowing something about my partition layout explain this weird behavior I might be seeing? Uh, so we definitely wanted to increase our transparency around this topic. We've published a couple of new docs uh, in the past several months uh, and really excited to be here to bring this content to a broader audience as well. All right. So today I want to cover four hot topics that we often get uh, in this area, just to go one level deeper into how partitioning and throughput distribution works behind the scenes. I will kind of assume a basic understanding of how Cosmos DB partitioning works. Uh, so Mark, if there's anything there that doesn't make sense or just want to bring up for the group, just uh, feel free to interject. Sure. Uh, make sure we get that. Yeah. Well. And I'll, I'll stop you if I see questions. Uh... Uh, coming from uh, viewers today, too. Cool. All right. Uh, so probably the top four questions we get in this topic are, one, how does Cosmos DB determine the number of physical partitions? Uh, for the most part, if you have smaller workloads where you're just getting started, you don't really have to think about this topic. But when you're ready to go to production or you're ready to do a large data ingestion or know you're going to have a very serious workload, oftentimes knowing and understanding how to uh, fine tune your partition layout can be really helpful to get the best cost and performance. Uh, similar to this, there's a lot of questions around when does a physical partition layout change? Hey, I had 10 partitions, now I have 15. What happened? Uh, does that impact my application? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll just kind of go through how to reason about this and basically figure out how much you even need to think about this. Uh, we've got some general best practices for scaling your RUs. Uh, let's say you're at 10,000 RUs and you know you want to increase What's the best way to figure out more systematically how to increase as opposed to just uh, picking a random number and hoping that works out? Uh, and then lastly, spend some time talking about how you can optimize your partition layout beforehand for large data ingestions. Uh, and here, the optimizations will basically help you get the highest throughput and the lowest time for your ingestion, as well as the lowest cost during and before, uh, during and after uh, the ingestion is over. Uh, so before I maybe I get to this, I just want to give a quick recap on how partitioning works in Cosmos DB. Uh, there are two concepts you need to know, uh, logical and physical partitions. Cosmos DB uses a hash-based partitioning system where your data has a partition, your container has a partition key. Every time you insert a new document, Cosmos DB hashes the value of that partition key and figures out which physical partition it belongs on. So you might have five physical partitions. Think of a physical partition. It's just a piece of SSD-backed storage and compute that physically holds your data. 
So the partition key and the value of it determines which partition that data lives on. And all data with the same logical partition key value is the same logical partition. So if you partition, let's say, a user profile store by user ID, if Alice has 100 documents associated with Alice, that's one logical partition. It gets hashed to a partition. If Bob is another user ID, it has 1,000 documents, that gets to a logical partition and gets hashed. In the grand scheme of things, if you have a good partition key, all your documents will be roughly evenly distributed among all your physical partitions. All right. Um, each physical partition in Cosmos DB uh, can hold 50 GB of data and 10,000 are used as storage. So just file those numbers away. Uh, we'll use them later in this uh, in this uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, so when you first create a new container in Cosmos DB, you go to the portal and select container name, container, uh, what, uh, how much throughput I want. When you tell us the throughput, we use that as a heuristic to figure out how many partitions that you should store, uh, that we should start with. So every physical partition, like we said, can hold 50 GB of data. And in the beginning, when you create a new collection, Cosmos DB has no idea to know how much storage you plan to have, right? So the only heuristic you really have at this point is the throughput. In general, not always, but in general, workloads with a lot of throughput tend to have more storage. Workloads smaller amounts of throughputs tend to have less storage. So what we do is we take the total amount of RUs that you tell us you want to provision and figure out uh, how many partitions we'll start with. So basically, we take the starting number and divide it by either 6,000 or 10,000 uh, if you're using manual throughput uh, or auto scale or shared throughput databases. Uh, so for example, if you were to create a new auto scale container uh, with a max throughput of 50,000 RUs, scales between 5,000 and 50,000 RUs, you get five physical partitions. Uh, if you're to do the same thing with manual throughput, uh, you'll get nine partitions. Uh, 6,000 and 10,000 is a little bit of an implementation detail. So uh, these numbers can change in the future, but if it's helpful, these are what it is. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. So if I have, if I used up to 6,000 uh, manual throughput, I'm going to have a single physical partition is what <clears throat> you're saying there. That's correct. What if I have 7,000? Then it'll round up. So it'll uh, be the ceiling of the division. But I still do. I still end up with a single physical partition. If you start with seven thousand and you're using manual throughput, uh, then you'll end up with two physical partitions to start. I see. And why do we create two uh, physical partitions uh, above that six k uh, number? Yeah. So it's a bit of an implementation detail, but the intent behind it is with manual throughput. Uh, each physical partition, just in Cosmos DB, each physical partition can hold ten k. Uh, do 10K throughput, 10K RUs per second of throughput. Uh, so the idea is if we provision you at 6K per partition, it gives you a little bit of headroom to scale up instantly without having to, um, the system having to add more partitions. Ah. Uh, so we'll get into that in a bit more. Uh, with auto scale, the idea is you've already kind of told us you're at max. So given that's your max, we think uh, it might be a while before you even need to get more than that throughput. So we can kind of provision you at 10K uh, to start there. Got it. Um, so that's the starting number of um, starting number of partitions. Uh, the next common thing we get is that's the starting number, but how does the number change over time? Uh, and also, why does it matter? So uh, typically it matters if you're getting into a position where you're getting a lot of throttles uh, or you're looking at your storage distribution and it's not as even as you'd expect it to be, uh, kind of getting a sense of the number of physical partitions uh, will be helpful in knowing how you got there is also helpful. So physical partition layout can change in only one of two scenarios. The first one is the user. Uh, you as a user provision more RUs than the current layout can support. So each physical partition can hold 10,000 RUs of throughput. So if you ever tell us you need more than uh, your total number of partitions times 10K, then Cosmos DB will add more on your behalf. As an extreme example, imagine you start with 400 RUs, that's one partition, the entry point, and then you go to a million RUs. Again, not very common. Uh, typically, don't advise you to do this unless you really, really <laughs> needed that one million throughput. Um, but as an extreme example, right, we would obviously need to add more resources, physical partitions to support that throughput. So this is always uh, user triggered. Uh, we'll get into the some details into when Cosmos DB needs to add more partitions for your throughput and when you do not. 
The other scenario is something that you don't really have to worry about uh, too much. This all happens automatically in the background. It's one of the key value props of the system, which is that when any partition uh, gets close to this 50 GB threshold of storage, ConstantDB splits it and automatically adds more partitions. So you, this is why we say storage is practically unlimited in ConstantDB. You don't really need to think too much about, uh, you don't have to tell ConstantDB up front, hey, I'm going to need one terabyte or 10 terabytes or anything. Uh, just fill in the storage and ConstantDB will split uh, automatically. Um, so we do uh, many, many, many of these splits a day. Most customers don't even know what's happening, but that's all part of the, I guess, magic <laughs> of the service there. All right. Um, so the reason it's uh, interesting to think about these, uh, about when partitions change, uh, when the number of partitions change, is it really affects uh, how fast you can get uh, more throughput if you're asking for more throughput from the system. Uh, in general, there are three types of uh, throughputs, uh, like three types of ways that Cosmos DB can handle your request for more throughput. Uh, the first one is if you ask for an amount of throughput that can be handled by your existing partition layout, there's no uh, nothing we need to do. We just add more throughput to what you have. So for example, let's say you started out with 400 RUs that gives you one physical partition, and now you decide to go to 10K RUs. A physical partition can handle 10K RUs, so we'll just give you the 10K on that partition. Cosmos DB doesn't have to do anything to add more resources there. So basically, you get instant scale up the moment you say um, replace throughput, or I think it's update throughput. Um, you immediately after that call goes through, then you have the new throughput available to start using. Now, if you ask for an increase in throughput that is more than what the physical partition layout can currently support, Cosmos DB will asynchronously in the background keep splitting your partitions and adding more partitions until it reaches the amount of partitions it needs to give you that amount of throughput. So for example, if you want to go from that one partition to let's say that handles 400 RUs to 100,000 RUs of throughput, Cosmos DB will keep splitting until we've given you 10 partitions at 10K each to give you that throughput. Now, while we don't have any SLAs on exactly how long this takes, because it depends on the amount of data you have, how big your throughput increase you want is. Typically, if you want uh, the higher, more throughput you want, the longer it will take because you have to add more resources. But in general, it can take around five to six hours as Cosmos DB splits uh, the partitions uh, to do this. Um, so uh, both, none of, neither of these is better or worse than the other. Um, but in general, if you uh, are doing any kind of uh, load testing or you're doing any kind of um, uh, any kind of operation where you're uh, performance benchmarking, uh, it's sometimes helpful to uh, get a sense of, to kind of pre-provision the system to get the partitions you want to minimize uh, adding more, right? If that's gonna be non-deterministic in your uh, final results. So there's no, uh heuristic for how big of a th increase in throughput you're saying? Not so much. It's more, I guess there's a heuristic in terms of um, we'll know like the system and you can figure out how many partitions the system needs to add. Um, but in terms of like how long it takes, there's storage, there's replication, there's a lot of factors. So uh, hard to give an SLA, but in general, I'd say five to six hours is a Fair estimate. That makes okay. So it makes sense. So, I mean, um, I guess there is some heuristic with regards to uh, the storage, but you add an interesting point that if you scale up, you're not just scaling out in one region, you're scaling out in all. Yeah. Uh, and so that has to happen in multiple regions, and there is uh, potentially replication uh, involved with that. And yeah, lots of coordination um, that has to happen. And everything needs to be in right in the right place and right there before that's ready to go. So uh, that makes sense that uh, we want to make sure that's atomic, I guess, if, <laughs> is yeah. what I'm trying to say. So, okay. That's cool. Um, and for completeness, it's also instant scale down. Uh, so today, the physical partition layout will not change. Uh, if you say you had 10,000 RUs before, now you know, let's say I only want 400 RUs, I'm going to save a ton of cost because I don't need all those RUs, then that just happens immediately and you're able to get uh, that new throughput. Okay, so we'll just run through a quick example here. 
Uh, and I know there's kind of a lot of math and it kind of is behind the scenes. I think at some point I'll publish like an Excel spreadsheet or maybe uh, some kind of calculator uh, to do all this just so you can plug in numbers for your workload and then get the answers. Uh, but it's helpful for if those of you who like to kind of understand the intuition behind the scenes. So I'll just kind of go through an example here. Um, so let's say we start with a collection that has 50,000 RUs of manual throughput. Now that'll give us nine physical partitions because we start at the heuristic of 6K RUs per partition. So we've got nine physical partition, which means that each physical partition is allocated 5,555 RUs. So throughput is always distributed evenly across all the physical partitions. Now, if you have nine physical partitions, remember each physical partition can hold, uh, can do 10K RUs per second worth of throughput. So that means you can scale up to any number up to 90,000 RUs without uh, a split happening, which means it'll be instantaneous, which means if you say I want 85,000 RUs, 70,000 RUs, 90,000 RUs, as soon as that offer uh, update call happens, or the replace throughput call is finished, which is typically the order of like milliseconds, uh, you'll have a new throughput available to you. If you scaled up to the max of 90,000 RUs, then each physical partition would now have 10,000 RUs. Uh, so basically, if you think about it as kind of like a two-step system, there's like some amount you can get instantly, right? Because it's already there. And then if you want more, then the system, Cosmos DB has to add more resources uh, to support that. Right. In general, Cosmos DB will add the minimum number of partitions to achieve the desired throughput. So I think this fact is most useful for um, if you're doing any kind of uh, low testing or benchmarking or just want to test something and you want to use more throughput. Um, if you know kind of where you are in terms of the number of partitions, you can actually figure out, okay, if I, let's say I wanted to test with, in this case, like 50,000 RUs, it's helpful to know that'll be instant. I'll get 50,000 RUs immediately and I can start my benchmarking uh, and I can uh, get the results I want. Versus if I went to like 100,000, right now I kind of have to wait for the system to add those resources. Uh, so it's just useful to kind of save some time and uh, figure out um, kind of stay within that range if uh, that's all you need. Um, does that make sense? I think. Yeah, it does. I mean, um, it's just important. I, I mean, understanding kind of these numbers uh, is important to understanding how quickly you're going to get uh, what you need. And then also just in terms of kind of scale up and scale down. Uh, yeah, of course. Well. Yeah, best it'll save you <laughs> some time. Like, oh, no, now I have to wait for my new throughput before I can continue. Do <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just for completeness here, uh, in this case, if we scale up to anything above 90,000 RUs, because we had nine partitions, physical partitions, uh, the system would add more. And if we scale up, for example, to 150,000 RUs, we'd split until we have, by we, we mean Cosmos DB, uh, until we have 15 partitions. So that's just uh, how you can basically apply this reasoning for uh, share through a database, auto scale, manual. Um, they all, this kind of logic of adding the minimum uh, to meet 10K uh, works the same way. Can we talk about shared throughput or are you going to cover that a little bit later? Uh, what would you like to know about shared throughput? I guess, um, I guess I just want to ask you, like I see people using it uh, and I know, I know we say, look, if you, if you want kind of reliable performance on your data, that's within, uh, you know, a database or within containers, uh, don't use the shared throughput uh, in there. And I guess I wondered if, if you could explain that in a little greater detail, like why, what does that mean? We can't provide uh, predictable performance uh, on data that's spread across that's that's spread across the database into all these different containers. Yeah, definitely, um, hundred percent agree with that advice. There, uh, the idea of shared throughput database is that you have a database. It has some number of containers in it, uh, up to twenty five containers. And they all share together the throughput allocated at the database level. So if you've got, say, a thousand RUs at the database level and ten containers, they all kind of first come first serve uh, can get that one thousand RUs of throughput. Uh, behind the scenes, what happens is all the data for all the collections is actually distributed among a shared set of physical partitions. So unlike a dedicated container where, let's say, I provision fifty thousand RUs in my container and I have nine physical partitions. Those non-physical partitions are only for that data in the container, right? So I know that level of isolation and throughput is available for that data. But the shared throughput database, all containers, if I had 25 containers, all of their data is kind of spread random evenly 
uh, as evenly as possible uh, based on kind of your partition keys um, across all the physical partitions uh, that we have. So because that hashing can be uh, can be random, there's no guarantee that like, oh, container, like if container one is on the same partitions data as like partition as container five and container one happens to be super hot, right? And everything else is idle, then you might have like a noisy uh, neighbor kind of problem. Uh, so it's nice for, I think for uh, kind of dev tests when you just need to test for correctness, uh, just have a bunch of containers in there to try it out. Although of course serverless can also help in those cases. Uh, but if you really have a production workload where uh, you are worried about um, like resource governance for each container, then definitely mm -hmm. recommend using dedicated throughput. How do we, how is that data uh, hashed, if you will? Is it just amongst the values that are stored? Because if, obviously if you've got different containers with different partition keys and they've got potentially different values, are we, is the hash just straight up the value that's within the defined partition key and that's the range across the database or is there is there something else like i guess what i'm getting at is like um if i have like really highly asymmetric data in terms of kind of storage or even access in there does that does do the values if it's just on the values is that as long as the values are evenly distributed i'm okay or is do I run into issues like what you were saying with noisy neighbor? So does the container itself, I guess if you could kind of help me understand. Yeah, so I think the both the container and the actual partition key value are taken into account for this, uh, for this whole range. So uh, it's possible if you have like, let's say one container that has a ton of storage, right? And another container that doesn't, um, if that container is kind of all data, if all of that is getting hashed to one physical partition, then you also kind of have a bottleneck too, because only that partition is now of like all the partitions you have even getting used, right? So uh, in general, I think if, there, if I'd say if there's like any potential for skew or any hot collection inside this shared through the database, then uh, generally just try to use dedicated for- Use for dedicated. Okay, that makes sense. Cause I think we also tend to sell folks, like you want to make sure that the, that the access patterns and the storage is somewhat even as well. Mm -hmm. um within there right and that so that would make sense that we were hashing on the container as well as the partition key or the value within that so okay that makes sense and then yeah so everything's distributed and then that also makes sense with hey if you got one in there that's really noisy or busy you're that's where the the lack of predictable performance comes from because you just don't know yeah um, how that how others are going to behave when they when they get requests so okay I hope that explains it. I understand better. I hope, <laughs> I hope, our, I hope our viewers do too. So yeah, ask your maybe. questions. Cool. Uh, okay. Maybe in a future episode, if there's interest, we can kind of like uh, go more in depth in depth there. Like sure. Between. I'm sure people love that. Yeah. Oh. All right. Okay. Uh, so we covered this. Uh, I think one best practice to add here is, so this is something I see a lot with uh, customers who see 429s uh, or throttling. By the way, uh, throttling or 429 uh, or request rate too large, uh, responses can be thrown when you've basically exceeded the throughput for a single partition, uh, physical partition in a single second. In general, if you have between 1% to 5% of 429s on your production workload uh, and your overall end-to-end -end latency is the same, this is usually pretty good, and I would say most customers are happy with that. reason is the SDKs will automatically retry on your behalf. So oftentimes, the 429 error might not even get bubbled up to the end application. It's just the request might take a little bit longer because it might take one or two retries. So people should, so we're going to retry it <clears throat> nine times. Yeah. Uh, or 10 times in total before we say anything, before the SDK does anything. So if you are getting them, what you're saying is, hey, these are okay once in a while. Just grab the retry value out of the header in the response and then retry it yourself after a second or whatever like that is what you're saying. Yeah, that's I can good. do that as well. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, I mean, that's the whole point is you want to use as much of that throughput as you can, right? It's like saturate your throughput. And if you get an occasional 429 that says, hey, we're a little too busy right now. Try again in a second. Then... People should just design for that and expect that it's going to happen once in a while. You're yeah. saying it's if it's happening all the time, you <laughs> maybe, maybe then uh, add a little more throughput. 
Yeah, I'd say the, I guess the two data points to look at together are not just the rate of percentage of throttlings, but also in your application, the end-to-end -end latency and what you expect for your workload is an acceptable end-to-end -end, uh, request time. If those things are okay, that means the SDK is handling the retries for you um, and everything is fine. It's actually good to have some level of throttling. Uh, it's unrealistic to expect zero throttling. I know sometimes uh, it's tempting to say, oh, there are a few throttles, like something must be wrong, but actually it's just a sign that you're using all the resources that you have, right? Um, so in general, the typical advice is if you are seeing a lot of 429s uh, and you think they are a concern, uh, like they are a real concern, right? Let's say you actually had like 15% of your requests getting 429. Um, and you want to uh, increase your RUs as a response, try scaling up to this number first. Try scaling up to the maximum that can be supported by the uh, current physical partition layout uh, to see if that helps your problem before, because uh, if you go, if that helps your problem, then you're great, right? Cosmos DB didn't have to add more resources. You didn't have to wait five to six hours for the throughput to come in to solve this 429, uh, things are good. Uh, try that first. If it doesn't work, then of course, yes, continue scaling your throughput up uh, or see if there's another, uh, like another root cause for the issue. Um, but yeah, just try to stay within this range first and then adjust later if needed. Yep, makes sense. All right. Um, so now that we kind of have the basics down, uh, I want to touch on a kind of a, uh, I'd say it's a bit of a niche advanced scenario um, for a specific type of workload where you have an expect perfectly even distribution of data, and you want to guarantee and main, maintain even storage distribution, uh, which in this case typically uh, implies even request distribution um, as you continue to scale up. So an example of this kind of workload is imagine you have some kind of event store um, and every event uh, has an ID or a GUID and you've partitioned by ID. So GUIDs are pretty much the nature's most perfect <laughs> partition key because uh, they're very random and though, and, Grand scheme of things hash almost perfect, uh, pretty evenly across all your partitions. Um, and typically with these workloads, because the distribution of storage is super even, uh, then in these workloads, the request distribution ends up becoming pretty even too. So, uh, and then that's like the most optimal way to use the throughput that you have. Hey, so, I got a, <clears throat> can I ask you another question? Sorry, yeah. <clears throat> these keep coming to me. Uh, can you describe the difference between the, like a regular partition key and the large partition key? when people are provisioning stuff in the portal. What is the difference between those two? Oh, yeah. OK. Um, so the large partition key, I think the text says, like, my my uh, partition key value is more than 100 or 101 bytes. Um, so this is kind of a legacy uh, aspect of our system. So I think internally, we call it like hash v1 and hash v2. I think in the SDKs, you'll see like yeah. version 1, version 2. Um, basically, in the past, uh, as a, like the way we used to do it is when we took the partition key, we would only hash the first 100 and uh, 101 bytes of the logical partition key. Uh, so if you had a really long partition key that was happened to all have the same uh, characters up to the 101th byte, then the system thinks they all should hash the same partition, even if let's say like bytes 102 to 500 are actually different. Right. So I think most customers didn't run to this, but of course there are, <laughs> there are always exceptions, right? Which is, uh, which is good. It helps push us, us push the limits of the system and improve the quality. Um, so basically now by default, we can have uh, partition keys that go up to, um, I don't remember the exact number. Mark, maybe you can help me look it up. But I it's, thought uh, it was like a megabyte or something crazy like that. Yeah, it's, it's something huge. like really large. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's... Uh, but yeah, so now with the larger uh, length allowed, then it's very it's less, a lot less likely you run into those collisions. I just uh, I, I brought it up because it made me think of a long time ago. I met a customer and they were using it was like the path to a resource or something as their partition key, and they were stuck. They're like, "What is going on here?" And then we realized, "Oh, dude, like everything is the same value up to that first you just up to the first hundred bytes." So uh, anyway, sorry, I'll let you keep going. Yeah, I know. Uh, good call. All right, so for these types of workloads where you really want to maintain uh, this perfectly even distribution, let's take an example and see how it's possible to get uneven distribution when you scale up and as a result, how to fix that and how to be uh, smarter about how to increase uh, the RUs. So let's take an example where we have 20,000 RUs on a collection 
that gives us two physical partitions. Let's say we have that already and 80 GB of storage. And let's say we determine we need to scale up because we have an unacceptable level of throttling in our system. All right. So with this kind of layout, this is kind of kind of what it looks like uh, in terms of your data distribution. So you've got two partitions. Uh, we also call them internally partition key range IDs. Uh, it's because each uh, physical partition has a range of partition keys that it holds. So therefore, partition key range ID, super creative name. Uh, <laughs> but it holds some percent of the key space of like the possible hash values. So roughly with the setup, half the values will hash to one partition, half the values will hash to another partition. And that's why roughly at the end of the day, with 80 GB total, you've got 40 GB on one partition and 40 GB on the other. So this is kind of the perfect even distribution setup that you have in your workload. Now, let's say I want to increase my throughput from 20,000, and let's just pick a number, let's say I increase it to 30,000, right? 10K are used worth more throughput. When constant CPU splits in general, we'll take, uh, we'll, we'll increase the number of partitions to the minimum number to handle your new throughput uh, requirement. So with 30,000 RUs, the system will need three physical partitions. So that means that only one of your existing partitions actually has to be split for that to happen. So before I had these partitions one and two, so we'll take partition two. Uh, typically we'll take the one that's bigger. Uh, these are probably roughly the same size, but maybe one of them is like slightly bigger. So we'll take that one and split it into two physical partitions. So now we have three physical partitions with 30K RUs, 10K on each. Uh, but because of the way that we did the split, now roughly half the storage is on, uh, let's say, Let's call this partition three uh, from the previous and half on partition four. So now these two partitions each hold about 25% of the key space. Um, and this one still holds 50. But if you look at it now, this one holds 25% of the key space or the total data, but it has 10,000 RUs. But this one holds 50% and also still has 10,000 RUs, right? So now if you had a perfectly even distribution before, now you might have a little bit of skew uh, because you can, can think of it as this partition probably has uh, more throughput than it really should, right, for the amount of storage and thus request volume that it's holding. Yeah, now, it's interesting. now, how do we get out of the situation? Uh, so instead, if we do something like increase the number of partitions and double them to a value that will force Cosmos DB to evenly split all the partitions, then we can maintain that uniformity. So for example, if we increase the throughput to 40,000 RUs, now that means we need four partitions. We had two before, so each of these need to split. And now we'd have four partitions, each with roughly 25% of the key space, uh, each with exactly 25% of the total RUs, um, uh, 7,500 each. Now we still want a 30,000, right? So we can first increase to 40,000 and then lower to 30,000 uh, once uh, this is done. So you're kind of uh, forcing Cosmos DB to split evenly uh, and uh, help you maintain that super uniform distribution. That's fascinating. Uh, it's interesting here. So I wanted to increase throughput. So two things I see. Uh, I want that even distribution. And what you're saying is the best way to do that is to double it, at least in this scenario here. Uh, but the amount of, and I got in total more are you, but per the partition key kind of value, if you will, it's, I actually get less in a way, or for that range, I get less yeah. in a way. So. Okay, yeah. which is why you want an even distribution of requests, right, across your your thing. Because is it are you then saying that as you as you kind of scale out here, that gets narrower and narrower in some way, or yeah, so not, it's a right because you've got total you go you still have more total throughput, I guess. So it doesn't make sense. So yeah, it wouldn't be scale out otherwise. Okay. Yeah, overall, this is uh, typically applies when you have a workload where you're extremely laser focused on maintaining that uniformity, typically yeah. workloads where you have like widths as the partition key. Um, for other types of workloads where there might be a little more natural variation in terms yeah. of how the, then this doesn't really impact you too much. Okay. Okay, uh, so I won't read this general formula. It's in our docs, but intuitively, if you, uh, for an arbitrary number of RUs that you want and it's some arbitrary number of physical partitions, it's basically like the get to the closest power of two, uh, uh, a two, um, and then start increase to that and then lower it to what you actually want 
uh, in the future. So this is all in the public docs. Uh, you can feel free to look at it. And if you're for as a fun exercise, you can also uh, write the formula <laughs> and derive it yourself, which I did to write this doc, uh, kind of a fun math exercise. I'll throw your best practices doc up here. I'm guessing this is where they can find it is in uh, this document here. So awesome. All right. Uh, so now that we've kind of covered uh, some basics about physical partitions, I've covered understanding how and why the number changes, uh, some best practices for how you can use that information to your advantage, right? like staying within the instance scale range, uh, keeping super even distribution of your workload if you, uh, if you need that. Uh, I want to talk about one additional scenario, which is how you can optimize your partition layout for a large data ingestion. So large is subjective, but I would say if you're going to ingest um, you know, 500 GB, a terabyte, terabyte plus, uh, this is especially relevant. If you're ingesting smaller amounts like 10, 50 GB, 100 GB, this is still relevant, but maybe not as, uh, not as critical. So any level of data ingestion can benefit, but definitely if you've got like a one terabyte plus ingestion coming in before you start, before you provision your first collection, uh, it will save you a lot of time and money um, by following some of these best practices. All right, um, so the step one is kind of just the prerequisite. Uh, make sure you've just chosen a good partition key. Uh, in general, you want something that has high cardinality that will evenly distribute your storage and request volume. Uh, this is just so when you start inserting data, uh, you don't get super bottlenecked, right? Worst case, imagine you had a terabyte of data, you partition by a key, that only had like, let's say five different values, right? Now for a thousand or a GB of data, you're all now gonna be bottlenecked to one of at best five partitions, right? That have, uh, that get hashed that value and all the other partitions you might have will just be sitting there. So pick a good partition key. Uh, and after you've done that as a kind of a side, it's good to shuffle your data when you're inserting it in that way, if you had 10 partitions the data was getting written to, instead of doing everything for, let's say, Alice, right, which gets bottlenecked to one partition, everything for Bob, which gets to another, just kind of shuffle them, do Alice, Bob, Alice, Bob, Carol, Eve, et cetera. Uh, so you'll be able to use all the throughput evenly, which will also reduce the number, amount of time overall. Before That's a super important point. And I've seen people uh, get frustrated when they're loading data or try to load large amounts of data is that they're kind of sequentially running through the values. And so they load all the customer one and then customer two and then customer three. And then <laughs> why can't I get any more throughput here? I, or why can't I get any more performance here? I max out on th or I provision a ton of throughput. And the reason is uh, it's in bulk mode. It's just going to well, basically it's only going to uh, do dispatch per physical partition key or physical partition, uh, if you will, on there. And so if you're basically ganged up on the same logical partition values, then you're functionally just kind of streaming in one at a time. It's almost like serialized, yep. uh, if you will, right? And you're only going to be able to touch a fraction of all the throughput in there. So uh, take note, folks. This is important. You want to either randomize it or spread it out. And I think the formula is, is uh, we're going to dispatch for the number of threads that you have on your local machine. So there's that piece there. And then, of course, there's the total amount of physical partitions you have. That's, your, that's the uh, maximum number you can kind of redress simultaneously when you're loading data in there. So use that to basically divide and then batch your stuff up across all of those different physical partitions. And then you can design your loader uh, to load your data that way. So anyway, sorry, I'll let you keep. Yeah, going. great, great suggestion, 100%. All right, so the next step is you just want to do a paper exercise to estimate what a good starting number of physical partitions might be for you. Uh, the reason you want to do this is, let's say you know you have a terabyte of data to ingest. Now, Cosmos DB does not know that, right? Um, so if you have a terabyte of data and each physical partition can hold 50 GB, then it's much, uh, it'll be much more efficient for you to have this number of physical partitions to hold all the data. So Cosmos DB doesn't have to split and add more partitions during the ingestion process. So this will save uh, you a bunch of time as well. So as a heuristic, you can take the total size in GB divided by the target per physical partition uh, that you might want uh, in GB. So each physical partition in Cosmos DB can hold at most 50 GB of data. Uh, for this denominator here, if you know that this is going to be your steady state, you're going to ingest this one terabyte of data, and that's pretty much how it's going to be, you might want to pack the partitions more fully. Right? So you might say, I'm expecting 40 or 45 GB per partition. So you'll get fewer uh, fewer partitions, right? It's kind of the steady state. 
But if you know that you're going to start with one TB and then in a month you're going to get another TB and so on and so forth, you might know, uh, you might expect some more growth. So then instead you might start with um, packing it to each partition to only, let's say, 20 GB full. So you have a lot more room to grow without having more splits in the future. So this denominator is really based on what you expect after to happen. If you're not sure, just start with something conservative like 35 GB. It's pretty uh, middle of the road there. And I'll go through an example of what the workload are. You can see how this affects uh, what you'll do there. Okay. So after you get a sense of the target partition count you want, uh, all you have to do is multiply it by either 6,000 or 10,000 RUs uh, to get the throughput that you'll want to start with. Again, this is kind of implementation detail, but if you're using manual throughput, it's 6,000. If it's uh, auto scale, then it's 10,000. Um, so let's just go through a concrete example of this. Uh, and of course, after you're done with this, after your ingestion is done, you'll want to lower your RUs to your actual steady state. Uh, that way, uh, we would never. Uh, that way, you don't have like a lot of RU sitting there for ingestion that you're no longer using. So you'll save cost that way as well. Okay. So let's take an example. Let's say we know we have one terabyte of storage, and let's say after this ingestion is done, it's going to be steady state. We don't expect too much more data to be loaded. So let's say we'll target per partition storage to be a, around 40 GB. If I have a good partition key with even distribution of storage, then I can expect roughly all my partitions to have roughly the same size of data. Now, if I want to have uh, roughly 40 GB per partition, then that means I will need 25 partitions. 1,000 GB divided by 40 is 25. So working backwards, if I wanted to use auto scale in this case to get 25 partitions, I would uh, need 250,000 RUs of auto scale to start. So this will scale between 25,000 to 250,000 RUs auto scale. So once you put 250,000 in the uh, Porta box to make your new container, then Cosmos DB will start with 25 partitions. This is super useful to you because now the partitions are already there. You start ingesting data. Uh, and unless one partition happens to reach 50 GB, Cosmos DB is not going to split or change the partition layout at all. So you can Think of it as you're kind of forcing the system to pre-provision all the resources uh, that you'll have so you can start uh, using them. Okay, uh, just for completeness, if you're using manual throughput, uh, then you might start with, uh, you'd start with a lower a number here. Uh, in this case, that would be 150,000 RUs. But then again, here, uh, you can, because you'll have 25 partitions, if you're using manual throughput and you really want to make this go as fast as possible without changing the partition layout, you could increase to 250,000 RUs, which is within that instant scale range limit uh, for your ingestion and then lower it down after you're done. Right. All right, by the way, uh, one thing I'll add here is this also works for smaller workloads too. Like imagine you want to ingest, let's say 25 GB of data. Well, 25 GB of data can actually fit on one physical partition, right? So um, if you want to start with, let's say auto scale of 10K RUs, you'll get one physical partition, store your 25, 30, 40 GB of data, uh, and just provision 10K RUs for it, right? That's a pretty efficient um, way to do it, as opposed to imagine starting with 100,000 RUs, right? You've got 10 partitions, Sure, the data might be spread across all of them, but now you have uh, a lot more RUs than you uh, than you actually need for uh, for that amount of storage, typically. Okay, uh, so one question we typically get when we give this kind of advice to uh, start with some number of RUs um, to kind of tune the partitions is, how does that impact what I can scale down to in the future? Cosmos DB does have a concept of enforcing the minimum throughput um, that is required for a collection. Uh, this minimum throughput is there to basically make sure that we can achieve our SLAs, that the container can run safely, uh, it can do all the background tasks that it needs to do to stay healthy. Um, in general, for uh, manual provision throughput, uh, there's a formula here. It's well documented in the docs. Um, but basically, the thing that you want to think about when you're raising your RUs or when you're setting that starting amount of RUs uh, is this term right here, uh, max RUs ever provisioned divided by 100. So in general, the higher you go, uh, the higher the minimum is that you can then lower to. 
right? So in most cases, we find this doesn't affect uh, workloads too much, but there are kind of a few anti-patterns which we'll call out uh, and share so uh, we can help customers avoid those kinds of pitfalls. Um, so as an example, um, in, the, in my case here, if I had to start, if I started with 250,000 RUs of throughput for my one terabyte of data, um, I'd have 1,000 RUs Sorry, I have 1,000 GB of data, but just plug in the numbers in the formula. My minimum throughput is uh, 10,000 RUs here. So basically for my uh, ingestion, if I start with this much, this is the lowest I can go to in the future, uh, which is still quite a bit. That's still uh, 25, um, uh, 25 X, uh, X lower, right? Quite a big scale range you can go up and down between. Just something to be aware of. Um, this is more of, uh, I guess, the biggest scenario when just this has an impact. It's typically, uh, we see this as an anti-pattern sometimes, where uh, sometimes uh, someone will scale up really high, almost arbitrarily high. Uh, so, for example, let's say you need to ingest, uh, you scale to 1 million RUs, which will, might give you 100 partitions. Um, and sometimes it's... Um, and sometimes like uh, we also see where you might see like a couple of throttles on your collection and then scale up a lot. Um, I think it's kind of like a, it's definitely a human instinct, right? If you see like, oh, I don't have enough, let me get more. Uh, definitely very relatable. But in this case, uh, what happens is if you scale up super high, then it kind of impacts the amount you can scale down to in the future. So for example, if you scale to 1 million RUs, you adjust your data, uh, then the minimum you could then scale down to would be 10K RUs. Now, the thing is, if you actually lower to 10K RUs, uh, each of your partitions now has fewer RUs than it did before. So we, uh, this is like, we call this RU fragmentation, um, where now for the same amount of, uh, same amount of throughput, uh, each partition kind of has a smaller share relative to, the, uh, to what it could have been if you just put it on one partition. Um, so as a best practice, just think about um, how you might want to optimize the layout for your storage needs. 50 GB of data probably could fit on one or two physical partitions. You could start with, let's say, 20,000 RUs, get two partitions, load your data, and now uh, each of them can get at most 10K if needed. It's all kind of compactly there, right? Uh, same deal if you've got a terabyte, uh, provision the, uh, the partitions you need up front, uh, and uh, do your ingestion efficiently without waiting for Cosmos DB. Yeah, is- look at it this way. If you're ingesting 50 gig of data, it's faster <laughs> if you don't provision a million RU because yeah. it's going to take forever, or not forever, it's going to take longer to go and get all that provision for, and for it to be ready for you to ingest. And if you had just inge- uh, set it to like, I don't know, 20K or whatever or something, uh, and then just went and then wrote the data and then set it to whatever you need. So um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. Yeah, the more you okay. know. Yep. Yeah, so um, that's all the stuff I had for uh, today, Mark. Um, thanks for giving this opportunity. Uh, we definitely want to continue fine tuning uh, this guidance, making it easier and more intuitive, uh, providing more transparency just around how partition works in Cosmos DB. Uh, so please send feedback your way, things that are confusing don't make sense. We'd love to make sure that's easier I just, uh, for all the yeah, customers. I just have one question from a viewer. Uh, Greg here is asking, uh, share just makes sense when you have a lot of smaller, basically, containers uh, in there, right? So that's why you would use it primarily? Yeah, i say that's definitely one good use case. If you have, uh, let's say, so you can have up to 25 containers in a shared throughput database. Uh, if you were going to provision that in provision throughput mode, you'd have to have 400 RUs each, whereas uh, with the uh, shared throughput, you can have all of them under 400 RUs. Uh, I will say, though, with the introduction of serverless, uh, which allows you to have, uh, I think, up to 100, uh, 100 containers per serverless account, uh, they actually have a zero en- entry uh, cost, right? If you don't, you only get billed for the RUs that you consume. So if you don't consume any RUs and they're idle, then that container is basically free. So I would say check out serverless for those use cases if it works Um Works otherwise, share throughput database can definitely help you have lots of small containers that uh, don't have any super like dedicated throughput requirements there. Got it. Uh, question: uh, What cos- what does Cosmos DB do when Autoscale sets up for container with max uh, two hundred thousand? Does it Cosmos create twenty partitions immediately? Yes. Uh, so. <clears throat> 
so if you're asking, there's two way, two scenarios here. One is you create a brand new container and you start with auto scale. Uh, max RUs of 200,000 RUs divided by uh, 200,000 divided by 10,000. Yeah, uh, is uh, 20, uh, 20 partitions. Uh, but if you're just migrating between Mando and auto scale on an existing collection, uh, the partition layout doesn't change there. Uh, whatever you had before is what is going to stay. Uh, the only thing that's different is now the auto scale or manual. Right. Another question as well. This is an interesting one. Uh, what's the impact of queries which are not running using the partition key for those queries? So I guess the way I, I would phrase this is, uh, what happens to queries that are fan out uh, in small containers with, say, one physical partition versus one where I've now got 20 physical partitions? Great question. Uh, so in Cosmos DB, the, uh, I think our friend, our colleague Tim likes to call this like the query cover charge. Uh, going to each physical partition to check the index to see if the data is on there consumes between two to three RUs. So if you have uh, a lot of physical partitions, let's say you've got 10, and you do a cross-partition query that fans out to all partitions, that'll be an extra overhead of 20 to 30 RUs for that query. So again, maybe not a big deal if you only run the query once a minute or you um, uh, or you don't have uh, too many, uh, like, like you have enough RUs to actually handle like 30 RUs overhead, not a big deal. Uh, but if you have like a thousand RUs, right? Imagine now every, <laughs> the overhead is like probably more than the actual amount of work to get the results. And the that's just to check it. So, and yeah. this is where things like, uh, let's assume now there's data on there and you're still not using the partition key uh, within there. The, kind of the net effect of this is that the more you more throughput you add, the less scalable your database is going to be, uh, is kind of how, uh, Kind of, kind of the net impact of that. So, just why partition key choice is so important uh, early on. So, uh, one final up from uh, this viewer here. Uh, looks like these guys were, looks like these guys over provisioned. Uh, they've only got. So, how do they scale down? They've only got a few hundred documents in their dot in their in their container. It looks like. Um, I think if they're over provisioned, um, today, I think the best thing is to probably migrate that data into a new container with less throughput uh, for them, right? So, cause they can only scale down so much. That's true, yeah. Yeah, so that's how you would, I would just use change feed and then just connect it to your first container, uh, have it start at the beginning and then just read it all the way through, get all those, all 600 of those documents and then write it into a new container uh, with just minimum throughput in there. Um, four, 400 should be enough. Uh, and that should only take just a moment to run there. So. Okay, I've got your best practices up there. I'll leave that up for folks uh, just for a second. Uh, and uh, just a couple of quick um, notes here. Uh, we've got a new global virtual user group, Azure Cosmos DB Global User Group. Uh, definitely join us every month. We've got another um, meetup coming in February. Uh, we've got Lenny Lobelli who's gonna talk about querying uh, in Azure Cosmos DB. So come and join us there on our meetup and then uh, you can come and check us out. Uh, <clears throat> this is episode 38, so there's 37 other episodes you can come and check out, which uh, include Deb. She's been on the show, gosh, a bunch of times now, I think. You were my first guest. Do you know that? Oh, wow. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. how long ago was that? I don't even that know. That was uh, just, uh, I want to say the beginning, end of April, maybe, beginning of May. I can't remember now. It's We've not been doing this for quite a year. I'll have to do an anniversary show, I guess. That'd, so that'd I'll, be awesome. I'll, invite, I'll invite you back on when we do an anniversary <laughs> show. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so lots of other episodes. Definitely come check them out. Uh, last uh, last year we ran uh, Azure Cosmos DB Comp. That was our inaugural. Uh, we're going to do it again this year. And the CFP for uh, this conference is now open. Uh, if you would like to speak or present uh, at our upcoming Azure Cosmos DB Comp, the CFP for this is now open. Uh, just visit us here at AKAMS slash Azure Cosmos DB Comp. Uh, and submit a session. We would love to have you. Uh, that's it for us this week. Next week, I'm going to have uh, uh, one of our teammates, Kashagra Thapar. He's going to talk about something which maybe you didn't know, but we have a Spring Data SDK. I think most people know we have a .NET and Python and Java and JavaScript, uh, but we also have a Spring Data one uh, as well. So uh, come check us out next week. Uh, he's going to walk us through uh, that and some best practices in there. 
And uh, that's it for us uh, this week. Deb, thank you so much. Uh, it's great seeing you. And um, definitely have you back on soon for sure. But at a minimum, I'll have you back on for our one-year anniversary. That should be fun. <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks, Mark. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.